Assume we are given a point set in the real plane. A triangulation is the partition of the convex hull into simplices. In two dimensions, these are vertices, edges and triangular faces. A triangulation is said to have the Delaunay property if the circumcircle of every triangle does not contain any other vertex. In the Seagull implementation, an incremental algorithm is used to compute Delaunay triangulations of point sets. Assume we are given a Delaunay triangulation of n-1 points. How to add an nth point? At first, we have to find the triangle containing that point. Then we have to find all triangles whose circumcircles contain the point. These triangles are said to be in conflict. The new triangulation is obtained by deleting all triangles in conflict and adding new triangles connecting the point to the boundary vertices of the hole. This algorithm works as well in three dimensions. Assume we are given a three-dimensional point set. To illustrate the incremental step of adding a new point to an existing Delaunay triangulation, we assume that the triangulation of this point set has already been computed. We want to add this point. At first we have to find the cell it is located in. Then we have to identify all cells that are in conflict with the point, that is, host circumspheres contain the point. Now we can delete these edges, creating a hole that finally is to be filled with new edges, connecting the point to the vertices of the hole. Let us now present the periodic space. We assume a square with the property that if we leave the square on one side, we enter it immediately on the other side. What happens if we compute a triangulation of a given point set in the same way as before? We cannot claim any more to compute a triangulation of the convex hull, because if we replicate the points in all directions of space, we see that we do not have the notion of a convex hull anymore. Furthermore, also the Delaunay property does not necessarily hold for this triangulation, as can be seen on the two non-empty circumcircles. A periodic Delaunay triangulation of this point set looks like this. Or like this, if we don't draw nine periodic copies of all vertices and cells. However, there are still cells that are drawn twice. To address this problem, there are several solutions. For instance, we can just clip the triangulation along the square. Alternatively, we draw each cell exactly once. If it happens to intersect the square, then we decide for the upper right one. In three dimensions, the square becomes a cube. A periodic triangulation of this point set looks like this. For the sake of clarity, we resort to drawing each cell only once. In this setting, the incremental algorithm works in exactly the same way. Assume we want to add a new point to the triangulation. We first have to find the cell that contains it. Then we have to identify the cells in conflict. Now we can create the hole by deleting all cells in conflict. And finally, the star connecting the newly added point to all vertices of the hole. In R3, a tetrahedron is uniquely defined by four points. However, this is not true in periodic space, because we have several possibilities of choosing periodic copies of the given points. Therefore, we have to equip the vertices of a tetrahedron with additional information. These are three-dimensional integer vectors determining the periodic domain containing the wanted copy of the point, where the first component gives the index of the domains in x direction, the second in y direction, and the third in z direction. Of course, there are all kinds of linear combinations possible. What does a periodic triangulation of only one vertex look like? In two dimensions like this, and in three dimensions like this. Note that since there is only one vertex, all edges connect this vertex with itself. So this is not a simplicial complex, one of the requirements of a triangulation. The solution is to compute with explicit copies of the periodic domain in this case. It is enough to use one explicit copy of the domain in each direction to get rid of self-edges. Finally, we show the periodic triangulation demo that we implemented. Starting from the triangulation of one point, we can add several random points. We can have a ball flying through the domain, showing the periodicity. We can locate the cell that currently contains the point. We can determine all cells in conflict with the current point and we can insert points at the current position.